we could come together. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall not behold and not another. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We come today to give God thanks and praise for his goodness, for his grace and his mercy. We come to celebrate the life of our dear brother, Brother Robert Jerome Craig. We come to give God glory for his life, his commitment, his contribution to his family and to his God. We come on behalf to say to this family, to Mother Craig and Sister Janice and the Craig family, that our prayers and our love are with you. For we all have to sit where you sit today. Amen. All of us will have to go through this experience. And if you haven't been there yet, just hold on. For all of us will have a turn. Amen. Amen. There'll be some changes to the program. There's some people that couldn't make it, but that's all right. Amen. Family appreciates those of you who are here. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to follow the program, and we will give the, the changes as they come. We just want to have a word of prayer right quick. Father God, we just pray at this hour as we gather for this homegoing celebration that you will... Be our strength and our comfort. Bless this family. Bless our gathering here today. We ask, oh God, that you keep us all safe. And we'll give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Scripture and prayer I will do. And then after that, uh, we will have acknowledgments of cards and condolences in the obituary by Sister Gail Monroe Harris. And then we will have memories of my brother. I ask as you see your name on the program if you would just come up and follow as the program has been printed. The 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, a word of prayer. Father God, we come placing the Craig family in your hands today, O oh God. As we gather here with them and sit in, sitting through this most difficult hour, we pray strength to this family. We pray your comfort and your peace. Bless Mother Craig today. Continue to strengthen her and the family. Go with them and stand by them. God, we know you're too wise to make a mistake. And we know you have all power in your hands. And God, we just ask that you stay by their side. For you said in your word, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We thank you, God, that as we travel this life's journey, we know that trouble don't last always. We thank you that you have not brought us this far to leave us. We thank you that you're watching over us right now. 
bless and keep this family and all who have gathered here today, God. And we'll give your name the praise, O oh God. And if there's somebody here that does not know you, save them today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sister Harris will come in. To the family, I love them. And may you find some happy and some happy in the Lord. And I have a prayer. Um, Janice asked me to do this for her, so I said, of course, I will. And I love some Janice. Um, first, I'll start with some hearts and acknowledgments. This comes from Sandra Brooks. It says, remembering their beautiful song, God gives every person their unique song. It's one that will play the entire life long through the love that they give and the gifts that they share through the memories they make and the dreams that they dare. What a beautiful way to celebrate them through the song they lived. The song will carry you forever in our heart. In sympathy and prayer, Mrs. Sandra Brooks and family. Amen. Amen. This next card comes to mother, to mother Craig and family. It says, the heart is never ready, the time is never right to say goodbye. Thinking of you with deepest sympathy and hoping each new tomorrow will bring you comfort and peace. Second Baptist Church family, Pastor Marcus Abels. This next card comes from the Second Baptist Missionary. It says, keeping you close and caring thoughts and prayers, though your heart must hold deep sadness at the loss of your loved one, May it also hold the blessings of the life you shared and the love that will always be a part of you. Praying that God will comfort your heart, uplift your spirit, and carry you through this time of sadness to a place of peace with deepest sympathy. Second Baptist Church Missionary, President Sandra Brooks, and Pastor Reverend Marcus Echols. Um, if you'll join me in looking at the obituary, homegoing service celebrating the life of Robert Jerome Craig, also known and loved as Uncle Bob or Uncle. Robert Jerome Craig was born in Romeo, Michigan on July 16, 1950, to the late Thomas Jewel Craig Sr. and Pearl White Craig. Robert was the fourth son of six sons born to this union. Robert gave his life to the Lord at a young age and was baptized at Second Baptist Church, Romeo, Michigan. Like his three older brothers and four younger siblings, Robert attended Romeo schools and was a great athlete. Robert excelled in football and track. He was a graduate of Romeo High School, class of 1968. Robert earned a full scholarship to Western Michigan University and he was in his last year of school only needing six credit hours when he took a summer position at Ford Motor Company. Unfortunately, Robert was injured when a high-low driver ran over him and he received head, shoulder, and back injuries that bothered him throughout his life. Robert never finished his last six credits at Western Michigan University. Robert went on to work in cable and telecommunications and building and repairing small engines. He also worked for a few years as an assistant home care aide in Southfield, Michigan, excuse me, before he retired. Robert attended Second Baptist Church of Romeo and also Greater New Hope and taught Sunday school alongside his mother for several years. Robert never married or had any children. Instead, he focused his life loving his nephews and nieces. He became the surrogate father figure for his nephews, Terrell Ellis and Dr. Gerald Gershom, Jr., EDD. Robert also spent many summers teaching his nephews everything he knew from fixing cars to cable to fishing. He shared a lifelong special bond with his nephew, Gerald, who finished what his uncle started to go on to become an educator. Gerald completed his EDD and was very excited to call his uncle and share every accomplishment. Robert didn't forget his nieces, Janice Gershom, oh, I'm sorry, Robert didn't forget his nieces, Jasmine Gershom and Chanel Gershom, and even took time to teach them how to fish. When his youngest sister Janice gave birth to her youngest daughter Danielle in 2004, he developed a special bond with her. He bought her a little tool belt and would take her everywhere with him. She learned how to install cable, change a tire, 
fix computers, small engine repair, camping, ice fishing, and fishing, all from Uncle Bob. <laughs> the two would become great comrades and attended every carnival in Michigan every year. Robert would bake cakes, cook the turkey, the cupcakes, etc., and try to do it all with Danielle. After a short, brave fight against metastatic prostate cancer, Robert gained his wing at midnight on Friday, September the 18th, 2020, while in palliative care at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. Robert leaves on this earth his darling, 100-year-old, thank you Jesus, year-old mother, Pearl White Craig of Southfield, Michigan. Sister Lynette L. Craig Harris of Pasadena, California. Brother Tristram Ray Craig of Auburn Hills, Michigan. Sister Reverend Janice Pearl Ger Craig Gershom of Southfield, Michigan. Robert was preceded in death by his father, Thomas Joel Craig Sr. Four brothers, Howard Thomas Craig, William Earl Craig, Thomas Jewel Craig Jr., and Huel Lionel Craig. One paternal aunt, Addie Mae Craig, his mother's twin brother, Earl White Sr., paternal grandmother, Louise Keaton Craig, and grandfather, John Craig. He also leaves behind a host of nieces and nephews, great, 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 and great, great, great. <laughs> the family of the late Robert Craig, Robert Jerome Craig, acknowledged with deepest appreciation the many comforting messages, floral tributes, prayers, and other expressions of kindness and concern evidence at this time in thought and deed, or more personal acknowledgement will be sent at a later date. A very special thank you to Reverend Terrence Gowdy and the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church of Pontiac, Michigan, Reverend Nelton Shorter, Sister Tamara Daniels, Deacon and Sister Carl Webb, Sr., Deacon and Sister Jane Shumpert, Reverend Christy Edwards, Pastor Kenneth C. Pierce the second of Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church of Detroit, Michigan, Pastor Kenneth Brock of Detroit, Michigan, Reverend James Craig the second of Craig Memorial Tabernacle, Detroit, Michigan, myself, the Bell and Cushenberry families, the Tinsley family, and our dear sweet friend, Mother Sylvia Stewart. Special thanks to the entire community of Romeo, Michigan for their love in our time of bereavement. God bless you and keep you in his care. Amen. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Fine. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Um, short notice, I've been asked to sing a song. I don't know if I have it in me. Uh, this is a different kind of hurt that I don't know if my weight can um, get carried, but if y'all just allow me to take it, I'll try to get one out for you. I sung this song at my um, Uncle Junebug's funeral, my Uncle Bob. He really enjoyed it, and um, he spoke to me about it a couple of times. And I'll try to get it out for you guys, please. Oh. Truth is, I'm tired. Our chains are few. I'm trying to pray. But where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't say what's left to do. Truth is I'm weak, no strength to fight. No tears to cry, even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die. One touch will change my life, take me to the King, I don't have much to bring. 
My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Lead me there alone. To gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the King. Trust is time to stop playing these games. We need a word to for the people's face. So Lord, speak right now. Ready for thy praise. <sighs> We're desperate, we're chasing after you. No rules, no religion. I've made my decision to run to you, the healer that I need. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Lead me there alone. Gaze upon your glory and sing to you the song. You take me to the king. Hello everyone, thank you for coming. I usually cry. <laughs> but it's an honor to share memories of my big brother. First, I want to honor our mother, Pearl White, Craig, Queen Pearl, 103 years. We thank her for six boys and two girls. I was the oldest and spoiled by all my big brothers and truly each of them treated me like a princess in their own way. So as each one passed, the next one took up or the other one left off. And after Junebug passed and Bob said, okay, he stepped up to the plate. And he's just such a dear brother. When he knew I was coming to town, Everybody start running. Aunt Lynette or Lynette, your sister's coming to town. Run. <laughs> and we had our own definition of how things should be. But I so appreciate him because once he got my routine in, where I have to have, I've already took a red eye. So I had to have some coffee when I landed. So he started bringing a cup of hot coffee and some barbecue ribs that he would stay up all night fixing for me. So that's a welcome home. <laughs> so we want to celebrate his life. It's, it's heartbreaking because he's my big brother. What we call him Superman. We used to call him Bob Hayes when he's running track in high school. And he could really run. Um, but what I want to celebrate is that when I was in I think first grade, now we're just a year and a half apart, but the teacher said, Robert. I said, his name is Jerome. No, his name is Robert. I ran home, I was so upset. I said, Mom, the teacher said, Bob, that Jerome's name is Robert. <laughs> so that's when I learned that his name is Robert, not Jerome. <laughs> 
So I called him Jerome for I don't know how many years, but as he got older, so many people were calling him Bob. So I said, okay, I guess I'll start calling him Bob. And he was just such a dear person. He loved the Lord. He took out his mission, as he shared with me. He said, I feel the Lord has me here to take care of Mom. And that's what he did right up to the end. Amen. The Thursday he was re-hospitalized, he was pushing Mom up the ramp so he could go to his dialysis. That's true love. Yes. And I know that my, I know Mom preferred him over me because every time I visit, go, where's Bob? Where's Bob? <laughs> he been in the living room. I'm right here, Mom. I said, okay, Mom, I guess I just don't count. But <laughs> he did his best to care for our mother. And it takes a special person to care for an aging adult. It really does. And he did his best. And we love him for that. Um, and also when I came on my last visit, I'm of course I'm scattered brain, but I had bought, his birthday was July 16th, so I bought him a t-shirt, Superman Clark Kent, because I kept telling him, you're going to have to retire your Superman uniform for a minute and be Clark Kent, just take it easy. He didn't want to put it on, he says, I'm going to put that in the Hall of Fame. I said, man, just put the shirt on, but he never put the shirt on, but we did consider him our Superman of the family. You needed something fixed, whatever. Bob would figure it out. And I, I just love, so love that. And he always expressed his love for the family and most of all for the Lord. Every night, he would pray with Mom. Okay, what time that they decided to uh, go to bed, he would, um, excuse me, uh, go in there and say, Mom, let's pray. And I was here toward the end of August. And uh, during the previous visit, I usually come every year. As sick as he was, he still got on his knees and prayed. He prayed for our mother. That takes a special person when you are ill and yes. weak to still get on your knees and praise the Lord. And I just so admire him for that. I admire all the good times he and my nephew Tommy, Jr., the third, sorry. We're reminiscing on Labor Day, this past Labor Day. They were going way back, and I said, y'all done left me, because I don't even remember any of that stuff. But we cherished that time, because they were talking about so much crazy stuff, and how much fun, and this, that, and the other. So we thank God that he allowed us to come together and share that time. And um, our sister, Stella, was there as well. She shared in the memory. And none of us knew that he would, the Lord would call him home. Um, I also want to share, so we want to celebrate his, his life. He's a great guy. He's already gone. He's with the Lord. So I know we're crying, but I hope that all of us can take away from today the loving memories that we as a family share for him. And, like I said, Bob and I had our differences. Everybody knows when I come, I'm a clean hour. <laughs> this is last visit. I didn't tell him I was coming because I knew the week as he was, he was going to try to get up and clean. So I did a Walmart.com delivery. Because <laughs> normally I tell him when I'm coming and he'll be at the airport. But I knew he was ill, so my nephew Tommy said, I'll come get you, Auntie. He said, but don't tell him about that I'm coming because he's going to get up and try to clean his, his way of cleaning. And so I sent all this Walmart.com stuff, cleaning stuff, my gloves, make sure I got my plastic gloves, make sure I got coffee, everything I need <laughs> to walk through the door. And I called him just before I got on my flight. He said, yeah, I knew you were coming. I got the Walmart.com delivery already. <laughs> got all this stuff, got some food. I said, am I used to cleaning stuff? I got my coffee, got my creamer. <laughs> I said, and I don't want you to go out there on the grill and try to fix anything for me. I'm good. I'm here to take care of you. But bless his heart, he would get up. I think two years ago, my nephew Tommy contacted me. Now, I'm in California. He said, Aunt Lynette, Uncle Bob don't look too good. I said, why are you calling me? <laughs> 
call 911. So his blood sugar had dropped. And so I kept calling and checking at him. Next thing I know, he's back out there grilling. After the EMT left, he went back outside and started grilling. So if any of you all ever tasted his barbecue, it was delicious. You cannot, you cannot compete with his barbecue. But I just, I had such pleasant memories. He just had my pet. Bring it to him at the airport. You can't ask for a greater love than that of a brother. And as we were cleaning out his home, oh, good Lord, that I thank my nephews <laughs> for coming out and helping me and Megan. But this is true, Bob. I found this prayer that he had written on the back of a, what is it? <laughs> Little Caesar Pizza. This is Bob, true to him. But the words so are so reflective of his heart and his love. He said, if there are any demons attempting to attack, harass, or torment me or my family, I am now coming against each and every one of you in the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am now coming against each and every one of you operating under the full power, anointing, and authority of God, the Father, and Jesus Christ. Demons, in the name of Jesus, I now plead the blood of Jesus Christ against each and every one of you. I repeat, I now plead the blood of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ against each and every one of you. Demons, in the name of Jesus Christ. I now command you to leave me right now, and you are to never, ever come back on me again. Go now, in the name of Jesus, I repeat, go down in the name of Jesus Christ. August 5, 2019, I, Robert Craig, proclaim freedom for myself and my family through the blood of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Before I start I just want to say um, I'm the last of all the sons I lost five brothers and when we lost my youngest brother Hugh my brother Robert came to me and he told me he said man we got to start getting closer I told him I said man I love you we can always be close no matter what I don't see you like we used to, but I never stopped loving you. And he told me, I never stopped loving you. The last words I had to him were, I love you. And he said, I love you too. I walked out the door, never to speak to him again. I didn't know at that time, but I'm glad that those were the last words I said to my brother. Amen. I'm going to talk about our life together from when we were kids, the good and the bad. And there was a lot of good, and there was a lot of bad. But it wasn't bad, bad like a lot of people, but it was personal between me and him. Just like he did his niece and great niece, he taught them a lot of things. He taught me a lot of things coming up. He taught me about cable TV and how to work on cars. Back in the day, we used to rebuild alternators and starters and carburetors. And he taught me a whole lot back then. And I got pretty good at it. I used to think I was better than him. <laughs> and he always told me, he said, you might get as good as me, but you ain't going to never be better than me. <laughs> and he was right. Because whatever he did, he did it good. He, he mastered it. And there was a lot of things he could do. I remember when we were little kids, I used to try to hang out with him and 
Arnold and Marshall Lothry. And uh, he didn't want me hanging out with him. I was three years younger than him. And that's a big difference when you're little kids growing up. But I used to be determined to hang with him anyway. One day he told me, he said, I'll let you hang with me, but you got to do something. And I said, what? He said, put this can on your head, and I'm going to shoot it off with this arrow. <laughs> <laughs> and we were over at Lions Park. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, if I don't do it, he's going to think I'm scared. So I put the can on my head. And we had these bow and arrows that we, used to, that we got. I always had them. And I stood up there and he shot that arrow and hit me right there by my chin. <laughs> I still got the sky right there from that. <laughs> and I thought later, what was wrong with me? I let him shoot that arrow off my head. He was trying to do like William Tell. There used to be a picture we used to watch. William Tell shot the apple off his little boy's head. And uh, after that, he let me start hanging with him a little bit. Then as we got a little bit older, there was another time when uh, I was just getting my driver's license. I, all I had was a permit. And he had a girlfriend uh, up at Port Huron. And he let me ride with him up to Port Huron. It was during the winter time. And uh, he left me out in the car, got the engine running. And so I could keep warm. He didn't want me to come in the house with him because you bring your little brother with you to go see your girlfriend. I was just I was just glad to be there. But while I was sitting out there in the car, he was taking too long. So I started the car and took me a little ride. I was coming down 24th Street in Port Huron. And a car was coming the other way and they Hit the, there used to be a little dimmer switch on the floor of the car that you hit to dim your lights. They hit the switch for me to dim my brights because the brights was on. Well, I didn't know where the dimmer switch was at. So I reached up to the panel and I hit the button and the lights went off. So I turned them back on. Oh, that was the sheriff. <laughs> I tried to get away. I got all the way over to the house where he was at and the sheriff stopped me right out front. So everybody inside saw the lights out front. He came outside. My brother wanted to know what's going on. And the sheriff explained to him, this is your brother. I said, yeah. I left him out here in the car listening to the radio while I was inside. I said, well, he was going down 24th Street, <laughs> bright lights on. We hit for the dims, and he turned them off. So my brother looked at me. He started fussing at me. I said, well, if you didn't leave the, dim, uh, the bright zone, I wouldn't have never got stopped. What did I say that for? He want to jump on me now. Because that's my big brother. And um, he told me he was going to tell my father when we got home. And I was worried then because my dad didn't play. <laughs> and uh, he never did tell though. And I appreciated him for that. He actually saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> then as we got older, he, he left for a few years. He went out west, out in Arizona and places. And, then he came back one day, and uh, me and him, we, I was older then. We started hanging out together, and uh, that was before I went into the military. And um, we, we were more like best friends than we were brothers. And we, did a lot, we really got to connect with each other as I got older, and we started hanging out. And... Um, I was working for the gas company downtown, and uh, I used to go on the weekends with him, and he taught me how to do cable. Cable hadn't even came here yet. He taught me how to climb poles with, uh, with the gas on, the spikes that they wore. Taught me how to do that stuff. Taught me a lot of stuff, and uh, we used to race up telephone poles when we had the gas on. We'd take a little fishing bell and put it up on the main cable line, see if we can get up there, ring the bell, get back down fast. I could never beat him doing that. He could run up them poles. I mean, he was quick. I thought I was good. I, I fell on the pole one time trying to beat him up and down that pole. And, uh, but we were kind of competitive. 
in a way and stuff. But um, it was all good. It was just trying to push each other to be better. And uh, I remember back when he was in high school. Yeah, he was fast in track. I remember all the kids in Romeo, we used to line up on Dickinson Street. We'd race from Dickinson Street down to uh, Dorsey Street, see who could beat each other. He, he could run, he could step. And uh, he could jump too. He used to broad jump about 21 feet when he was in high school. And um, dunk a basketball. We used to be in warm-ups in high school and they'd be warming up before the game. They had outlawed dunking back then. But during the warm-ups, he'd always get his dunk in. And people used to look at him and say, man, that guy jumped like that. You know, he's not that tall. And back then, someone that height like that could jump and dunk. They were up there. So he was pretty athletic. And he was good in track, good in football, good in, good in basketball. I always looked up to my brother. And um, I remember one day, um, I had become area manager for a cable company. Used all the knowledge he gave me to better myself and get the position I had. I was pretty good in computers and they were looking for people who could do good cable and who were computer savvy as well. And I had an A plus certification at the time. And so I went and got a lot of people that I knew, bring them in to start doing high speed internet here. And my nephew Thomas worked with me, a lot of friends, his brother Robert. And uh, he was over at my house one day learning how to do his stuff on the computer. And because uh, we had to go into customers' homes and work on their computers. People were particular about people touching their computers, especially back in those days. So I used to tell them, you have to go in there like you know what you're doing. You can't go in there not second guessing yourself. And if you ever have a problem, you can always get on the phone. We got customer support. So. Once I taught him how to open the computers up, go in, put cards and stuff in them, I'd sit down and say, okay, now I got my computer here. I said, you take it all apart, do what you're supposed to do, and I'll watch you. And he walked over to the computer, he sat down. He said, okay, let me see here. I said, no, no, you can't go in there and about, let me see here. You got to go in there and like you know what you're doing. And he looked at me like, oh, you're going to teach me now. I've been taught you all your life, and now all of a sudden you know so much, you know. But that, like I said, we were just competitive like that. And so he sat down and he learned how to master that as well. Um, everything he ever did, he was good at it. He taught me about small engines. He, like I said, he taught me about cars. He taught me everything I ever knew. And I always respected him for that because he took the time out to show me. And as he got older, he used to tell me all the time about how he'd take Danielle out to go fishing. He was bragging about her. I said, man, you never bragged about me like that. Because we were, we were guys. That was a man thing. But to have a young lady go out there and catch fish, do all the things that she was doing, he was bragging to me about her. I was proud of him. He was proud of her. He was a good person. He was a good man. When I heard he was sick back in June, I went up to the hospital, sat there and talked with him, me and my girlfriend, spent time with him up there. And he, he assured me that he was going to be all right. He said he had a tumor on his kidney that they removed. And they were going to see if it was cancerous or anything. Later he told me it was going to be all right. He had to do a dialysis and stuff. Next thing I know, he was sick. He had gotten worse. And um, my pastor contacted me and told me. So I went up to see him. And the last four days of his life, I spent with him all day up there. One day my nephew Thomas came up there when we were up there. We sat up there. I used to go up there from about 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon and stay with him until about 6 o'clock every day. And I took him this list here. 
of scriptures and prayers that I would sit there and read to him out the Bible. And when I first went up there, I had my, I have a Bible that I use that study with. And it's more in layman's terms instead of, so a lot of people can't understand what the Bible's saying. And I first, the first day I talked to him about having faith, believing, and trusting in prayer, and, and trusting in God. And then the next day I came up, I had all written all these overnight. I sat up all night writing, looking up these scriptures and reading them. And I came in the next day and I told him, I said, I've got these scriptures I'm going to read you. And I told him the first one's going to be James 5.14. And he started telling me what the scripture was about. I said, well, I got Psalms 146.8. He started telling me what that was about. I said, I got Exodus 23.25. He started reading that one. I mean, just laying there right off the top of his head. I didn't know if it was exactly what it was saying, but it sounded like he knew what he was saying to me. He said, Isaiah 4, uh, 41 10. He started reading that scripture right off. No Bible or nothing. He just right off the top of his head. So then I said, okay, let me start reading these. So I started reading, and he said, wait a minute. What Bible are you reading from? I said, I told you, I said, I got the Everyday Study Bible here. It's uh, the uh, New Century Version. I said, that's so you understand what I'm talking about. He said, that ain't King James. He said, I know what King James say. I've been telling you all the time. So the next day I came up there, I had King James for him. <laughs> he didn't want to hear no study Bible. He wanted to hear the word. I was impressed. I was very impressed. I've always been impressed with people who quote, quote the Bible like that. And um, I mean, he would give me that scripture and when I read King James, I'd tell him what scripture I was going to read. I got the Bible with me now. He started reading it. I'm reading it right with him, word for word. So then I told him one day I read and I, I, I just had to get him because that's how me and him used to do. And so I got him, I read him a scripture in Matthew. I got it here. It was, uh, what was that? Uh, oh, I had it here. Matthew 12, 46. Matthew 12, chapter 46, verse. And I looked this up because I was going to teach him something, I said. I'm going to show him something. And that was where they talked about while Jesus talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak to thee but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward the disciples and said Behold my mother and my brother, for whoever shall be the will, shall do the will of the Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Now he wasn't talking about like my brothers and sisters. He was talking about brethren within, within God, under God. And I told him then, I said, you know, you're not only my brother, you're my brother under God as well. Because I love the Lord, and He showed me the way He spoke the Word and quoted them scriptures. And He told me then, He said, even the devil can quote scriptures. He said, it's how you live your life that proves it. I said, yeah, I caught myself coming there to teach Him something, He taught me something again. I loved Him for that. I said, that's very true. You can sit there and quote scriptures all day long. But if you're not living your life right, all that don't mean nothing. And I, I appreciated him telling me that because I thought I knew something to tell him again and he was still one step ahead of me. And after that, that's when I told him, I said, I had to leave that day. I told him, I love you, brother. 
He said, I love you too. I walked out the door. And the next morning I got up. I was on my way up there to see him. It was 12 o'clock. And um, I got a message that he passed away at 12, 14 that morning. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I believe in the power of healing. I believe in God. And I believe that he was going to make it. But it's up to him. I told my niece Bridget that day, she was kept in contact with me, wanting to know how he was doing. And I texted her back. And I told her then, because he had a rough day that, that, that last day. And I told her, I said, uh, if anybody wants to say goodbye to him, today might be a good time. I hope he makes it through the night. And he didn't make it. But I was trying to hold on to my brother for myself. That was being selfish. It was all right for him to go ahead and go to heaven, go to see, go see God. Because he fought hard. I watched him fight hard. But after a while, he knew it was, it was his time. And, and he, he went on ahead and went on to the Lord. He's in a better place now. And in closing, I just want to say, while I was sitting there hurting myself and feeling bad, my heart, my true heart goes out to my mother. She's lost five out of six sons, two husbands. My grandmother, who I know loved her very dearly, they were very close. My Aunt Addie. I don't know if I could stand through all that myself. I know I couldn't. It's not normal. And my mother's 103 years old. She's been blessed by God. Amen. And we've been blessed to have her this long. All right. Just like when I lost my brother here, and my other brothers, it was a sudden shock. It was, it doesn't get easier. It definitely doesn't get easier. When I lost my first brother, Chico, I didn't know I could hurt that bad. And I turned around and lost my brother Bill. Didn't get any better. And my brother Junebug. was just crushing. My brother Huel, I wasn't even able to see him. Hadn't seen him in 30 years. I had a stroke last year. I was in intensive care for two weeks. I was recovering at the time when he came here. And wasn't able to get up out of bed to go see him. But I look at myself today and I say, I've been blessed as well. A lot of people look at me and tell me, you don't look like you had a stroke. Oh, I had a stroke. It's no fun. I didn't know anybody. Couldn't read, couldn't write, couldn't talk. Couldn't drive, couldn't do anything. And so I know what it's like to be bedridden and, and need prayer. I could have been gone before my brother. And I'd give anything to trade places with any one of them. Any one of them. But the Lord left me here. I don't know why, but there's a reason. And I just hope that I can find out what that reason is and continue to live my life the way the Lord wants me to live. Amen. I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my brothers, all of them. Because they were all good people. And my brother Robert here, with him and myself being the closest to each other in age, this is the hardest one. <clears throat> Because he told me, we got to get closer. And had I known that we were going to lose him today, as close as we were, I would still try to get closer to him. I, I don't want to take up a lot of time anymore. I talked a lot, but he deserves it. I owe that to him.
I spent a lifetime with my brother, sharing the good and the bad. And like I said, in the end, the last words we spoke to each other were, I love you. Amen. And I thank you. Thank you. We have some other people coming. I just want to say thank you for the brother and sister. Is she coming to say yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Keep, your remarks your five minutes. Keep your remarks brief. Yeah. We don't want to tax the mother. That's right. Amen. Put more weight on her. The brother and sister, I'm all right with that. Anybody else come be brief, please. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Christy Solomon. Um, I am part of the Craig family for over 50 years. My family grew up in Romeo, Michigan with the Craig family, the Edwards family. And I was embraced by Mother Craig like her other daughter. I don't know her any other way. They don't know me any other way as one of the sisters, all of the nieces and nephews, Tristan, Junebug, all of the boys before. Janice, of course, she followed under us. She didn't listen, but she followed under us. Truth be told, Tristan didn't listen either. But we loved him just the same. And my grandfather and all of my aunts uh, and uncles grew up in Romeo, Michigan. That's my base as well. I went on to school to become a um, doctor as well. I teach philosophy and religion. Um, I've been ordained as a minister for over 30 years, so I'm also clergy with the family as well. I'm not trying to take any time. I don't have to say anything about my love for the family, but I did visit, I called him Jerome, and even the last day I was there, and we prayed together, Pastor. And um, every time I talked to him, as much as he used to flirt with me, I said, you're my brother, Jerome. <laughs> we, we always go to brother and sister. <laughs> I don't care what age we get to. I'm going to see you as my brother. You know, and so we, we love that. Um, so I talk with him frequently. And um, this last week of his life, I visited him as well as I would do. And I talk with him. He was very clear about his journey with God, always was clear about how he loved God and how he was saved and when he was saved and the household that Mother Craig brought him up in knowing God all our lives. And I prayed with him and he took my hand because I was there the last evening and prayed with me as he always did. And so I was blessed to know that he wanted to pray for me on his last move because he knew God was calling him home. And he was so strong not to admit anything except he knew where he was going. And that's the mark of a Christian, and may I say, that you know from moment to moment, no matter what happens, we're wearing masks, but that does not stop that God is allowing what he wants to allow. And when he made that transition for Jerome, Jerome was at peace now. He was at peace then. He was at peace system. And um, Tommy and y'all all know that he was a strong man, even to the end. So I just want you to be encouraged to let you know that Jerome never gave up the fight and said his last day, his last prayer to me and to God. I thank you, Lord, for saving me. I thank you, Lord, for delivering me. Amen. And that's the mark of my brother, Jerome. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for being here today. And to Pastor Galvin. And to Mother Craig. 
and to this great family, we greet you in the name of our Christ. We know that God, He's everything to us, and He is what you want Him to be. And Mother, we know that you have raised these children, and you brought them up in the right way in Second Baptist Church. Amen. We know that God is a way maker, yeah. heart fixer, a mind regulator. Yes, he, he can do anything but fail. We say to you, may God bless you, may God keep you, and may God strengthen you. Amen. 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 To Pastor Cowdy, you, to the Mother Craig and the Craig family, uh, I, I've been knowing the Mother Craig for a long time, and I know all the children she raised up, up in Second Baptist, and I'm going to continue to pray for you, for you Mother Craig. Mm -hmm. You've been here a long time. He was a good old warrior. Amen. God been with you. God been with you. Yes. I know him. I know. I know God will take care through this through this sorry. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Those who have made comments. And again, we are here to give our love and support to this family and our prayers. Amen. Anybody else gonna speak? Gonna speak after me? <laughs> Not right now. You can speak after me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We not only need words from family and friends today. We gonna need them tomorrow, and the next week, and the next month, and years to come. Amen. But I want to uh, give you a word today that the Lord has given to me. To help you along your journey. Amen. And once I'm done, then the brother can come up and give his remarks and then we'll do the committal. Amen. Again, Mother Craig, bless your heart. We love you. Yes. To this Craig family who have been kind to me down through the years when I made my way to Romeo back in 1994. So we thank you. Yes. Amen. She was actually a couple, I think it was last year, Sister Janice brought us to our church in Pontiac, amen. And it was so good to see her, amen. So we come to just say what the Lord told us to say to you, amen. Our prayers are with you. First uh, Peter 5 and 10, there's a scripture that says, but the God of all grace, mm -hmm. who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen you, settle you. I want to focus on this part of the verse, after that ye have suffered a little while. And I want to talk from the subject, I want to deal with this little while. Because the truth of the matter is life is but for a little while. Man, what a year we have experienced uh, with coronavirus and all the things that have taken place. This has been a crazy year. Amen. Uh, destruction and devastation all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with racism and hatred and violence, police brutality, and even have to deal with a COVID-19 virus. All in this year, people have lost their jobs, people have lost their homes, and some have about lost their minds. It's enough just to keep your mind today uh, with all the craziness that we experience. But I have to say in the midst of everything that we have encountered and we've seen and we've witnessed this year, we have to admit that God has been faithful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that God has been good. Amen. We, we, we're we still here. That's how we know he's good. Amen. So many have left us. So many have lost loved ones. But we're still here. Even in this most difficult hour, we still owe God praise and glory. For our God, he does things all well. But what I want to focus on tonight is that, on this afternoon, that we don't be so 
Uh, we, be, we need to be careful that we remember that life is precious. Mm -hmm. and, and that not only is life precious, it's only for a little while. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're 20 years old or 120. If you live to be 120 years old, in God's eyes, it's only a little while. Mm -hmm. And so really, it's not about being born and it's not about dying. But rather, it's about what you do with your little while. That's right. That's right. How are you living your little while? Because we're all going to leave here. Yes. Amen. One day or another, we're all going to leave here. You, you don't have to be sick to leave here. You don't have to be uh, rich, poor, black, or white. we all going to check out of here one day. That's right. Amen, somebody. Amen. You have a day, and I have a day. The Bible says, it's appointed up unto men a point to die, wants to die. We're going to die. And that's not the issue here. We all are going to die. The question is, how are you living? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing with your little while? Mm -hmm. Oh, bless his name. Because we only have a little while. Mm -hmm. Are we hateful? Are we angry? <laughs> are we depressed? Are we disturbed? Are we dejected? How are you living your little while? That's right. Are we walking around mad and bitter and angry and upset, jealous, envious? What are you doing with your little while? That's right. What are you doing? Did somebody hurt your feelings 20 years ago and you still mad about it? <laughs> what are you doing with your little while? What are you doing? Somebody did you wrong and you promised never to forgive them. <laughs> what are you doing with your little while? Say that now. Say that. See, we don't have enough time yeah. to hate. That's right. Don't have it. We don't have enough time on this earth to be angry and to be mad. That's right. What are you doing with your little while? Say that, Pastor. Folk are walking around bitter. We've been mad for so long, we can't even remember why we're mad. <laughs> Oh, bless his name. Somebody did something to you, you won't let it go. You don't know, you could be about ready to check out of here. And still hold on to it. What are you doing with your little while? Are you being a blessing or are you being a burden? Amen. Are you giving life or are you giving death? What are you doing with your little while? Because my brothers and sisters, we only have a little while. Since we only have a little while, we don't have time to be angry and to be bitter. Too many people are bitter. You mad at folk that ain't even mad at you. You mad at folk that don't even know you mad at them. You mad and you can't go on with your life, but they're going on with their life. Amen. What are you doing with your little while? Because Peter reminds us here that we will suffer. You know what messes us up is that we don't believe we're supposed to suffer. We think that we are exempt from problems and troubles and suffering. But the reality is we didn't come here to stay. This world is not our home. We're just passing by. Amen. And if you're a child of God, you ought to want to leave here. Yeah. It got quiet on that one. I'm with you on that one because I, 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 I want to go to heaven, Deacon Trumpet, but I ain't in no hurry. Amen. I still got some living I want to do. Amen. Old mother at my church used to say, I want to go to heaven, but I'm not homesick. Amen. Still want some, I got some living to do. But I can live my life knowing That's right. that this world is not my home. Yes, my Lord, my Lord. And the trouble that comes, the things that I encounter on this side, God allows these things yes, yes. to prepare me for the day that I can see here. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You want to know what life is about? Yes, sir. Life is about getting to Jesus. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's not about cars, it's not about houses, it's not about right. money, it's not about popularity. That's right. It's about that when you close your eyes that you're going to see Jesus. Right. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. You can't afford to be bitter. You can't afford to be angry. That's right. That's right. Being bitter at folk is like you drinking poison and hope they die. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You got to lay aside that bitterness and that anger. Problem with our world today is we've lost our humanity. Yeah. We don't know how to love each other. We don't know how to respect each other. Yeah. We don't know how to, to treat each other. Yeah. And we're taking this little while that we have and we're wasting it. I look at our young people, they think because they're young that everything is all right. But I come to tell young folk today, you don't have but a little while. God gives us enough time to get it right with him. He gives us enough time to, to accept him as our savior. See, when you got Jesus on your side, you're not worried about this world. That's right, right. When you got God on your side, trouble, you, you can handle trouble, you can handle problems, you can handle pain and persecution. Because you know it's only for a little while. Amen. Let me help you out and I'm on my way down the highway. He said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. When you got God on your side, don't you think because you go to church, you're exempt from pain and problems. Matter of fact, you ain't had no problem until you got saved. <laughs> you ain't had no problem when you in the world. We need to quit lying. Amen. We come in church and we begin to test the lie and tell folk, man, when I was in the world, I was miserable. No, you wasn't. Amen. Nobody in here who did things in the world, you was miserable. Right. Talk to me somebody. Right. Amen. Oh, I was miserable. No, you weren't. Amen. Thank you, my sister. We enjoyed it. You, we had a ball. We, we had fun. It is only when you got with Jesus that you, you got trouble. It was right above in verse 5. And Peter here, if you read a few verses before it, he said, Satan desires to have you to sift you like wheat. Amen. Satan's job is to trip you up. Satan's job Amen. is to keep you That's right. from getting to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Trouble is coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. But can God trust you with your trouble? All right. Can he trust you to look to him when things are not going well? Yeah. And you got to be able as a child of God to know that even when you don't know what God is up to, you know God is still working. Yes. And that you know God is still in control. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Amen. Uh, Job said, yea, though he slay me, yes. I'm yes. going to trust him. Right. Oh, bless his name today. Yes. Job said, also, God, I, I've looked to my left, I've looked to my right, and I can't find you nowhere, yes. but I see where you've been working. Mm -hmm. Can you trust God when you can't trace God? To know that whatever happens in your life, God has it under control. Yeah, yeah. It's in his plan. I'm almost there, y'all. Matter of fact, you wouldn't be where you are today if it had not been for God. Somebody in here can testify that God had brought me through some things. Amen, somebody. I know we like to walk in church with angel wings and a halo, but some of us can testify that I'd have been to hell and back in my life. I've had to cry sometimes. Yes, yes. My heart was heavy. I had oh, yes. pain and trials and tribulations, yes. but through it all, yes. God was by my side. Yes. Through it all, I made it over. Yes. Sometimes I'm smiling to keep from crying, but I made it over. Yes. Sometimes not understanding why I'm going through yes. what I'm going through, but I made it over. Yes, Sometimes by myself, my with no family, no friends, but I made it. Yes, sir. Because I've learned how to trust God in yes, the midst my of my trouble. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Because you only have a little while. Yes. The little family yes. disputes you holding on to, you need to let it go. Yes. The little petty stuff, you need to let it go. You only got a little while. That's right. We're here today, we're gone today. Yes. You only have a little while. What are you doing with your little while? Yes. That's what I'll leave you with. What are you doing yes. with your little yes. while? Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you loving people? Are you treating folk right? Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. See, when you stand before God, he ain't going to ask you about nobody but you. Right. Amen. Nobody but you. He'll ask you about no one else but yourself. Yes, and you know what he's going to ask you? What did you do with that little while? Yeah. That's right. Yes, Lord. Were yes, you sir. kind to folk? Did yeah. you feed the hungry? That's right. Did you clothe the naked? Yeah. Thank you. Did you visit the sick? Mm -hmm. Did you go to the prison? What did you do with your little while? Yeah. That's right. Thank you. It's only a little while, saints. You think you've lived? I'm 54 now. There ain't nothing but a little while. Some of you are older than me. It ain't nothing but a little while. See, a thousand years is a day in the eyesight of God. These little years we live in, it's a little while. And everything that you have and will experience in your life has been divinely orchestrated by God to get you to where he wants you to be. You wouldn't be who you are if you didn't go through what you had to go through. Yeah. You wouldn't have a testimony without a test. Yeah. You wouldn't have a praise without pain. Yeah. Bless his name. Yeah. When you look back over your life and see where God has brought you from and see how he kept you, yeah. you got to give him glory. That's right. You got to give him the praise. Yeah. And yes, we don't want anybody to die. We want our loved ones to be here. We want God to heal them. God, perform a miracle. I hear that all the time going to hospital visit folks. God, I'm praying for a miracle for my mother, for my brother. Guess what? What if the miracle is death? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. That's right. The healing is on the other side. The healing is on the other side. Right. What if the miracle is taking them away from here? Yeah. <laughs> that there's no more pain, no more suffering, no Thank more you, sickness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Because to be absent in the body present, is to be present with the Lord. Isn't that why we walk in this Christian journey? Because one day we want to see Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless his name. Yeah. I got one scripture and I'm done, I promise you. I don't do funerals long, amen. Because amen. I understand what a funeral is. Saints don't have funerals, we have home going. Right. Amen. amen. If you're unsaved, this a funeral. If you say this a home going. Right. We celebrate what God has already done. You only have a little while, but listen what, what, what the writer in Romans says. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed. That what you're going through now will not compare to what God has for you. Right. Amen, somebody. Right. What you're going through now doesn't even compare to the victory you're going to have, My Lord, My to the life that will come. Yes. So I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, do right with this little while. Right. Live right. Yes. Amen. We ain't got to the point now we don't even call sin, sin no more. <laughs> We call it everything but sin. It's alternative lifestyles. It's, it's entanglements. We don't even call it sin. Amen. Somebody, but I come tell somebody sin is still sin. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. I'm through, y'all. Father God, we thank you for this time to share with this people. And we thank you, God. That it is you that gives us this little while. Now God, show us how to live this little while to your glory. Show us how to walk up right before you. Continue to bless and strengthen this family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the brother to come now when he's done. Amen. We will uh, do the committal. Amen. This is my first cousin, Earl White. Um, Earl just lost his life. This is my mother's twin brother. This is his son. And he came all the way from Georgia. And this is his daughter. They flew here. He, she came from North Carolina to be with my mother. Amen. And I appreciate Amen. them coming. Amen. And Danielle, they just want to say something to my mother on behalf of my mother. Thank you. He's also a minister as well. Amen. As you should know. Any minister?
No, no. His wife was a minister. Right. All right. Amen. Bless you. I know there's something in there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings. Uh, my daughter and I, I now live uh, since I'm in Ireland, Georgia, and she's from Bahama, North Carolina. Earl and Pearl. And Pearl is my. Earl and Pearl are twins. Mm -hmm. So I'm the son of Earl. Amen. I'm Earl Jr. Uh, I've been coming to Romeo for many, many years, going back in the 50s. Uh, and we're going to go back a little further than that. I'm going to make this very quick. This kind of reminded me, reminded me of some time on the A. Southern Shore. I think this kind of overbooked. Uh, and they had John and Mathis on the show. I think he was the last one to sing. And uh, Ed Sullivan said, uh, kind of usually, can you give us a half a song? <laughs> True, he sung a half a song. But he made good on it. So I'm going I'm to do a half a story here, and I'm going to try to make good on it. Uh, my father was a commercial fisherman. And uh, during the summer, that's all we did. We, that's how we made our living, fishing. Yeah. And, and those three months of summer, I got a little tired every summer on that boat. So I always had an excuse. I said, Dad, can I go up and see Aunt Pearl? So I looked forward every, every week of the summer to come up here. Uh, but there's another story behind this here, and they won't let, they won't let me live this down, so I'm going to call it the Tree of Life. They remind me every time I come up here about this tree. So we, I would come up uh, here every, every summer, and uh, from a little boy, I had a habit of wanting to start a car. If you had a car parked out in front of the yard, you better lock, you better lock the car. And I'm going to find some way to start that car. Well, the first summer, I think I came up here, and uh, I asked Aunt Pearl, could I drive this car out front? Okay this car. He said, you can drive? I said, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of hours, I didn't hear the tree. <laughs> and my daughter hearing this for the first time all these years. No one never knew that this happened. I had a tree with his car. And, and they won't never let me live this down when I come up here. The tree is still here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the day I leave, I'm going to go see that tree that I hit. They talk about it all the time. <laughs> So in, anyway, I used to come up here every summer with June Bug and Howard, and we go places and we do a lot of things and, and, and just have have a, have a lot of fun. But uh, I'm kind of lost for words up here. Uh, I'm thinking of a, a lot of the good times uh, that we've had up here. But going back, 57, I started coming up here 58, and then I got married. I brought my wife up here, Sian Pearl. And the next time I came up, my wife was pregnant. I kept coming. And uh, never stopped coming to see my Aunt Pearl. Yes, ma'am. So now, back before you kids was born, my dad was in the service before he became a fisherman. He brought my mother up here, and I think he was in the service, and I stayed here with Aunt Pearl. We leave it back during that time. There was a car parked out front there, and I started that car. <laughs> so talking about the car business, I must have had a love for cars because I got to work in the car business. I worked for Cadillac, General, General Motors, for about 40 some years. So I had a love for cars, and it, 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 it had a love for me too. So God bless everyone. I bring you greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Thank Amen. you very much. Amen. All right.
celebration and we thank you for the life of brother Craig his contribution to you to his family to his community we thank you God for letting him pass this way for just a little while now we ask your continued comfort to this family go with us bless all that are here today keep them in your care protect them keep them safe we thank you God for in the midst of it all, we can still give you praise and glory. For you do if all things well. Now bless us as we prepare to leave this place. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God's gathering home, we will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by.
Thank you, Pastor Gowdy. And thank you on behalf of the family for being here today to support them and, and to remember <coughs> Robert and all the family. Um, at this time, we're going to ask everyone to pass by and say a final farewell, beginning with the, the row towards the back here. And we're going to play a special song during that procession. Thank you again. Uh, we actually had a, a, a tribute booklet prepared for Bob. We're running late, but we have copies here that we'd like to share with you all. It has more tributes from other family members and pictures of Bob from when he was one all the way up, I guess, to and it's, he just celebrated his 70th birthday. But we want to share that with you, and we apologize that they're not folded properly, but we do want to share his memories with you. And thank everyone again. Can we all stand, please? Come right around.
Pastor Gabby. Bless you, Mother. Love you. 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 Love you.